Hello friends, today we will talk about the technique of retropupillary fixation of iris claw IOL. So iris claw IOL is a very useful technique to learn and we can specially use it in patients who are aphakic or patients who do not have adequate posterior capsular support or in complicated cataract surgeries. So here the tip, first tip is to mark these incisions 180 degree apart and to make scleral incisions instead of limbal. This helps in uh, avoiding the cat's eye reflex which might be seen with these IOLs. Now after in injecting pilocarpin to constrict the pupil, we are using dilute triamcinolone alone to visualize the vitreous in the anterior chamber and a good vitrectomy is must before inserting these iris claw IOL. So I am just taking all the vitreous tags and making sure that there is nothing coming out of the side ports. And before I go ahead with the vitrectomy, I decide that I'm going to make the scleral incision first. That is the main incision from where we are going to insert the IOL. So here I've done a conjunctival peritomy and I'm measuring a 6 millimeter incision. And then using a number 15 blade to make initial scleral incision and then using a crescent knife so that we can dissect the tunnel and we have a well sealing, well opposed tunnel. So what this does is because we have not done vitrectomy, the eye pressure is good and it helps in better creation of the tunnel. I have not entered the anterior chamber yet. I have just made the tunnel and now I am going ahead with the vitrectomy procedure. Before we implant the IOL, it is important that we clear all the vitreous from the anterior chamber. So this is a thorough vitrectomy and the vitreous has been cleared from the anterior chamber. I am removing all these vitreous tags which are near the side port to making sure that the pupil is not peaked anymore and there is no vitreous remaining and staining the vitreous with triamcin alone greatly helps in this. Then after this what we are doing is since the vitrector is already in the eye I am making a peripheral iridectomy with the vitrector itself which makes my job easy and now that we have cleared the vitreous made a peripheral iridectomy before I come out and to avoid the chamber collapse I am injecting viscoelastic inside the eye and then removing the infusion cannula from the other side. Now I am in entering the anterior chamber. Now we take this iris claw IOL and using a McPherson's forceps I am injecting the IOL over the surface of the iris. So first we place it on top of the iris and then by using a dumbbell dialer I am rotating the uh, IOL to the desired position where I've already created my side ports and now I'm taking these special iris claw holding forceps and holding the optic right at the center. This also helps in knowing where the enclavation needs to take place where the claw of this lens is and now I'm using a 27 gauge cannula and injecting it from the side port and pressing it down to enclave it very nicely. We can also pull the IOL before coming out to make sure that the enclavation is good. Now we repeat the same step on the other side, push it gently down and then use a 27 gauge cannula and press the iris down. Now before we leave the forces, we can move a little and make sure that the enclavation is complete. Since this is a vitrectomized eye, I prefer to put a suture in such eyes and just one single suture is enough because we have already created a very nice self-sealing tunnel. So we suture the incision and in the end we are just clearing off any of the remaining uh, viscoelastic substance that might be in the anterior chamber. So clear all the OVD, this would uh, prevent intraocular pressure rise as we all know post-operatively. So after this is done, again I remove the cannula and before removing the incision, I am just hydrating with use of the cannula and then seal all the incisions and use the cautery.